Yo, what is up, guys? It is your boy Tempest from Team AFG. Uh, before we start, I'd like you to check out our Discord link in description. Uh, so you can talk to uh, brilliant minds like me and my team. And uh, yeah, pretty much. But, anyways, so I'm here. I wanted to do a deck profile for uh, OP1 with the film structure deck or no the film structure deck and the film promos so all that i wanted to do a one piece t card game tier list and this is gonna be a little bit of in-depth explanation uh my this is my personal opinion i want to stress that because there's gonna be people in the comments that disagree with me and if you guys have awesome builds please 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 ping me on discord make sure to let me know I want to see your guys' feedback. I really, really love talking to the community, and I enjoy when I get into debates, not for the argument aspect, but to see other people's perspectives and their spice, mostly their spice. But with all that ado, let's get straight to it. So um, this is what I believe to be Tier 1 in this game. So Tier 1, this is, these are the decks that you're kind of going to commonly see. Right? These are the decks that they they do what they do, and they do it the best, right? So, I know there's two red leaders. Red's a really good color, but they have two different ways to play the deck. Um, we got Purple Kaido, which we'll get into in a second. We got Green Eustace Kid, and we got Doflamingo. So, these decks, again, are the common decks that you're going to see. These decks are very, very powerful and do... They kind of run their game plan, and these are the decks that are the best at running that their own game plan, um, or running the colors game plan for now. Right now, it's very early. A lot of the colors are pretty undefined, especially blue, which you know they can't it can't really find its place in the meta. So that being said, if we're gonna get into the first color, which is red. Uh, oh, woo. I guess I guess it's purple. Man, mistakes, editor, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think I got one. So, uh, yeah, here we go. We're going to jump straight on into it. Hey, uh, we got Kaido here. Kaido is pretty much, the pretty much. I think he's the boogeyman of the format. He definitely has the best top end in the game, the best mid-range in the game. He has the best neutral overall. His ability to deny your opponent resource, to deny your opponent their board, to ramp... To get to his game plan faster, it's it's fantastic. He's the only burn effect in the game right now, and he has all the other cards keywords. We got Structure Deck Uda. It's a blocker, and when you use her blocker, she taps down another card. Which again, it's use it's 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 bringing over the strengths from all the other colors and putting a very heavy restriction in killing your energy or your dawn in order to use it. In my personal opinion, if you know. This is the best leader. We got a couple of examples where you got Jack here who has hand destruction. Very, 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 very powerful. He, the hand destruction in this game could be the difference between your opponent surviving, oh, two cards in their hand could be the difference between them surviving a turn and them just straight up exploding on, you know. And you got Queen who's a huge blocker. And Queen is a blocks, she draws you cards. Like, Queen is fantastic. I think Queen is kind of the best blocker in the game. I don't want to say that definitively because other blockers are pretty good too. But Queen is very, very, very strong. And then you have the two big drop Kaidos. We're going to talk about the one from the film structure deck first. You on play, Dawn minus 5, which is not as steep as the other one who's a 10 cost and a Dawn minus 6. He gets, he gets a KO, a card 6 or less, and get Rush. It's fantastic. Okay, he, he definitely is a, is the type of card to finish games. Most decks in this early meta can't really make it to that 10k threshold, and the 12k board wipe is fantastic. It's, it's really good. I think the 12k board wipe is, is pretty much one of the better cards. You could probably, like, honestly rush, rush to your win condition and wipe their board and then have this huge 12k that they have to commit their entire board's worth of resource to kind of kill and even then if you have a good counter card in hand it probably won't die so that being said 
purple the strongest kind of color it has a, an early game a, an end game a good game plan very solid does everything you need it to do i'm pretty sure that this deck is definitely going to take you a long way if you want to run this in tournament next we got useless kid so useless kid is definitely the cheapest deck it is one of the stronger decks, right? It's right up there with Kaido. They're kind of brawling for first and second sometimes. I think before the film structure deck, Useless Kid's definitively the best deck. So we have a lot of advantages, all right? He's definitely the best leader by himself. He can win games by himself. His win condition is so easy. You just got to whittle your opponent down to one life, and all of a sudden, now they have to deal with two big swings, and they, gotta, they got to... You know, they got to respond to it. It has the best aggro, access to one of the few double attack cards in the promo Eustis Kid. It is a gr has great answers to certain matchups. If they're spamming blockers, you can rest down the blockers. You know, if they have a big threat that, that's going to swing you down next turn, they can just KO that big threat if it's in rest mode. Blockers, Eustis Kid, 8 drop, which I'll get into in 5 seconds. But this deck is pretty much really hard to play against it has some of the strongest game plans in the game it can't really be blocked for cards like straw sword that we see here rest one of your opponent's characters that's indiscriminate you can block you could if, there, if there's theoretically ever a 10 drop blocker straw sword's gonna be super 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 relevant it is very strong it's it's basically this game's equivalent if you guys play digimon to needle spray fantastic card so you see this big old useless kid he's the anime useless kid this is the eight drop this is your boss monster, comes in the set, the strongest card in the game right now. So Dawn 1, if this card is rested, they can only attack this card. And yeah, I know you can just kind of combo up to 8k and get through him, but remember, you get a defense step, you get to defend this card. This card doesn't go anywhere for a while sometimes. The best top end card, and on your opponent, you know, on your opponent's turn, you could put a Dawn on it, swing for 9k, and kind of begin to pressure them for game. This card is fantastic. It definitely finishes games. And if the, the turn you play it down, it even has the effect to rest him and play a, a card cost three or less. So, pretty fantastic card, pretty fantastic deck. Can't say anything bad about it. Law, the leader... Tap three, discard a card, restand it. So you can, on turns where you need to win the game and you know they have no blockers, you could put seven Dawn on Yusuf's Kid, swing for 12, pay three, discard one, and restand him and swing for another 12. That's pretty much GG's. I don't think any deck can deal with it right now as of this moment. But next set, we're getting these 6K, these 6K counters. So, you know, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be really hard for a lot of decks to kind of keep up with the big zoo aspect of things as as long as bandai keeps printing counters and answers to this deck so it might not age well but for right now op1 for the first couple months of the game until march best deck trafalgar law restands a supernova and a, or a heart pirate five or less beppo which is i wanted to get into it he's another version of the deck there's two versions there's you see this trafalgar law right here he's the supernova version he you restand cards, you're trying to aggro your opponent down. This is the Beppo. Beppo is the kind of the card spammy version. He's trying to play he's not trying to play that mid-range. He's just trying to vomit cards on the board, avoid attacks, and win the game. And you got you know, you got X Drake, who pretty staple overall. He kind of just pops big things. If you straw sword a blocker down, you could play an X Drake, pop it, and on your next turn they gotta deal with two more swings, right? A lot of this is just advantage, right? And how you compress your advantage. I think that this is definitely the best deck right now before the film structure deck. So our next deck, we got Luffy and Zoro. We kind of got two slides for this one. I'm pretty sure that these decks are not going to age very well in the future. But for right now, they're the best straw hat cards we have. Luffy, give one of your characters a rested dawn. Very efficient. Very, very, very strong. Very annoying right it's really rough to deal with and i think that in the future rush is going to be more and more rare of a keyword because of how hard it is to deal with you're already seeing a fall off of rush cards in set two so i think that luffy zoro 
pr are, are not going to get outclassed anytime soon. They're going to be very strong going into set two. If you want to play a deck that's going to age well, this is going to be your safest bet going into the next set. And Luffy, just strong. Zoro, he's a little bit of a different case. Dawn 1, all your characters gain 1k power. So he's kind of just like a, a strong mid-range deck where he's just trying to swing down your opponent. And he's just he, he's just trying to play that mid-range game. Aggro, right? Like, he, he's very aggressive, has very strong plays. He wants to keep the blockers off the board. Nico Robin is a 3-cost card. Dawn 1, 4k attacker that will pop a 3k or a 3 cost or less so that's most of the blockers in the game pretty sure these two leaders are going to be kind of somewhere within the third they're going to be brawling for like the, t the upper echelon right now it's kind of weird because it's it's kind of a color thing but it's okay so we got to kind of some of the advantages of running red right now we have an answer for the eight drop uses kid the aforementioned ca uh, card where you can just kind of beam it and kill it before it can really become a problem with round table pretty fantastic card and you know diablo jam diablo jam is kind of just one of the best cards in the game you know I, when i was playing the early structure deck format i really didn't think this card was very good i thought it was a brick i kind of took it out of the deck uh, you know what i mean but like listen this card is fantastic this card steals games it is so good sometimes i've had games where it's just like do you have the diablo jam in hand they're like yeah ggs shake my hand right this is really red red rush is literally the gg shake my hand deck all right you have rush zoro who's just has the keyword you have sanji for the two dawn he gains rush you have usopp who's unblockable just straight up all right and you have nami who's able to tutor all these all these really 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 like screwed up cards I'm pretty sure that this is going to be, if not the best mid-range deck. And and the Luffy down here, another thing that Red has going for it, and it also goes for the one-drop Nami that comes from the structure deck, these guys could just give themselves Rested Dawn. So they just kind of, if you play them early and you just let them stick on your board, they're going to start swinging for numbers later, right? These guys are sticky. They come out fast. They're strong. They they help whittle down your opponent's hand. And they're just trying to, they're just trying to run their game plan, right? They really don't care about what you're doing. They're just trying to punch you in the face. Just like a great Mike Tyson says, everybody has a game plan until they get punched in the jaw. So, got Daffy. Uh, oh boy. Doffy is very complicated. I can't begin to explain why. Because Doffy, when played correctly, should be able to win a lot of games. Doffy, when played incorrectly, man, listen, you are playing for hours, mid range. Not even. It is, it, this is, this is a control deck, right? Long, long games. Wants you to run out of resource. Very, very powerful extra cards. Very strong removal. They have they have cards for one dawn that scry five, which means you look at the top five cards of your deck and you rearrange them to the top or the bottom in any order. Very powerful. You always know what you're drawing. The the Kudra Pirate stuff, uh, like Boa Hancock and Love Love Beam, will means that you have a hand size always. You will always have blockers on board. You'll always have draw power. The most powerful extra cards in the game all right and you free play from the deck which means you don't even have to use your hand advantage and you have these massive threats like doflamingo and mihawk which are very hard to deal with and get you know 7k swing free play something is never easy to deal with and some of those cards like gecko moria do draw you cards but from the discard very 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 strong cards now the I have a little red thing in the corner. I think you guys noticed up to this point. There is a con. If time rules are anything to go off of, if it's best of one, 45 minutes, this deck won't survive. And it's just because of the rulings. And that's just the way it goes. You, you know, you have a fucking excellent deck that you really can't take full advantage of because you have like a t the time allotted to you and yeah you can time out your opponents and then you know the, the person with the most life kind of wins wink wink nudge nudge but i don't condone that play style and i definitely don't think that it's going to get you very far in a real tournament um if anything 
we got to figure it out. I'm pretty sure Doflamingo is going to be one of the strongest leaders in the game. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any doubt about that. I'm pretty sure, however the time roll shape up, is going to be how good this deck is. This deck is just as good as the others, and it definitely boxes with everybody else. It's just those time rolls, man. But in a casual format, where you have infinite time, and you're just fucking around with your buddies, man, this deck is fun. This deck is good, it's strong, it's powerful, you always know what you're drawing, powerful extra cards, powerful removal, strong team plan, always, you, you know, Crescent Cutlass is a really effed up card, right? They have to play the, some people will, you overturn the Rush Luffy to hand and they have to commit to two swings of the Rush Luffy or two, two full plays of the Rush Luffy, tapping completely out, it's so rough. So, all that being said, we got our Tier 2 leaders. Trafalgar Law, all the strengths of the previous leaders of Red and Green. The only problem with Trafalgar Law is that he has this problem where if you have five characters, and that's really hard in this format, Red will just snipe your stuff. Otama is a card that's a one-drop comes down says minus something by 2k and that that kind of destroys this deck i'm not gonna lie one you have one card answers to this deck that are just so effective against it having five or more if you have three red cards in hand and you have all red cards on field guess what you can't activate his effect he isn't very powerful he doesn't really have the sauce to kind of go on as time goes on will he get better yes right the red, the green, the green straw hat support is fantastic, and it's definitely going to be good within him. But for set one format, he just kind of lags behind the rest of the leaders, and compounded by the fact that he has four life, so his he always on a ticking time clock with a very particular weird game plan. So Trafalgar Law, definitely not one of the greatest leaders in the game, but he's definitely still competitive, and he, and if he gets the right board, he's cracking your head, right? There is no way you can deal with the full board in Trafalgar Law, and you have no answers in hand. It's one of the hardest things in the game to deal with. They have powerful, they have powerful mid game with the red cards, and they have a strong end game with eight drop Eustace Kid. Card fantastic, really hard to deal with. Odin, oh man, I like Odin. Odin's a good deck. Odin's a fun deck, but. Uh, the little problem of hand advantage and knowing when to use your Odin effect because he's basically Soul Striker, but instead of drawing a card, you discard a card. So, you know, uh, he's very, 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 very strong. He just struggles in certain places. He struggles in hand size. He struggles in, in all these weird places. Yes, his extra cards do help him, but also you've got to use extra cards. you got to use Don. All of these other decks, they don't really have to, like, bend over backwards for their game plan as opposed to Odin which great deck but he does have to bend over backwards for his game plan and that's the only thing I have to say other other than that his cards are strong his core game plan is strong the scabbards are all very strong but I can't have nothing bad to say about this deck he just lags behind the top five decks you know and here's crocodile crocodile I'm gonna say he's up there. I think he's, he's I think he's the top of the competitive with problem tiers. The only problem that he has is that he doesn't really have an effect. And the effect that he does have is kind of you're setting yourself two turns behind to get rid of a five cost card that they're just gonna slap back down next turn. At least that's the way I feel when I play him. You can use that that skill very skillfully and get over blockers, but also you have cards to kind of maneuver that. So I'm pretty sure that this card the only problem it has is that it's just not Doflamingo, you know. We got Kaido here. Whew. Kaido, this is a weird leader. Dawn 1, when one of your opponent's characters is KO'd, you may add one Dawn from your Dawn deck set it as active. So he's here, he swings for 6 every turn pretty much. He replaces the Dawn that he has. Very strong game plan, he just kind of... Uh, it, it's, it's weird because... His ga it's game play he's a good game plan. He's an Animal Kingdom Pirates. He has full access to Blue's defense, full access to Purple's like everything, which all the cards are good. It ha it's purple. You can run blue with ramp. You can run purple with blue with the blue draw draw power. You can run purple with a like you can run purple with a small blue splash. 
the the ideas are actually kind of limitless in this deck. I just don't enjoy playing this deck sometimes. When you clog and you have the wrong hand, you can't KO your opponent's cards, and you, you know you can't ramp as properly. It just kind of falls into the problem where it's just weird, right? If they're not playing battle cards, your game plan isn't really kind of popping off unless you draw the field spell. If you draw multiple of the field spell, it's really a feels bad man. The purple, you know, purple, it kind of struggles with that already. Having Perona to kind of help it out is definitely a pick me up for this deck, which is why I say it's competitive with problems. And also, I'm gonna say the same thing I said about Trafalgar Law. This is all compounded on the fact that you have four life. And you gotta really be cognizant of the board and how when to take life, and you know you can't mess that up. You can't take life at the wrong time, or you're just gonna explode. So st the struggle of having four life at any given time is is very very hard, right? You're playing with an arm tied to your high near back. It's it's really rough to deal with, especially against these matchups where you know Red Luffy he he he's holding no holds barred right. Turn one Nami, turn two Sanji, swinging at you for six, swinging at you for five, right? That's really hard to deal with. All right, it, it's one of those things where it's just like, what do I do here? Is just help, help, you know. <laughs> If you hit the wrong matchup, this deck this deck is exploding. And it's all because it's missing a whole life. So that's all I have to say about that. For the decks that are still good, these these decks are still good. I know y'all are gonna flame me for saying King is still good. But the thing that King has over Shanks, Animal Kingdom Pirates. That's it. The keyword and the keyword and being able to run that field spell will fundamentally keep King separate from the rest of the, of the decks. But 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 why why would you run King over blue purple Kaido or over purple Kaido? There's no reason. I know he's sitting here in the middle and you're putting you want to put him in tier two so bad. But like listen, he kind of has that over some leaders. I'm not saying you should run King over Kaido. You are. You have two purple leaders that are significantly better and have a better game plan than this leader. It's just, he has that trait and it just kind of makes him kind of better than some of the other leaders. Uda, Uda kind of has a weird place. She's a rush deck. She's a rush deck. She's trying to rush you down. She plays a one drop on the, her first turn or a two drop on her first turn. She taps one. She gives it, she makes it a six, six. If she has Nami, right, she will put a Dawn over to it, and then boom, right, you have a 7k swing on your turn one, right, and you're just swinging with rush cards, vanilla cards, making these vanilla cards freaking massive. I think Uda is pretty good. I don't think Uda is going to be winning any events, but I think that having the access to the red card pool and being able to buff these cards with basically no resource is very strong. In the case of Red Geen, Green Luffy. Now, there's a case that you guys will put him in Tier 1.1. And listen, that is more than okay. Right? All these leaders are very powerful of their own right. They're all very strong. They're all very weird. I just feel like... <laughs> I just feel like this Luffy is strange because he costs 4. Very expensive, man. It's, it's, it's expensive. Even though he gives a 1k buff, so he basically refunds you 1 Dawn. It's just... It's rough, man, and, and and he's he's kind of in the middle. He's positioned between like an aggro deck and like a, a mid range deck, and then he ha again the same problem as Law, but he has a worse effect. So he, I would say, pack filler on that one. Crocodile, when the next set comes out, this card's fantastic. This card is bringing him. He is crawling on his knees out of B tier, right? This man, he's. Definitely not gonna be there for very long. Listen, that zero that zero cost extra card is any indicator. This guy, he's totally, totally gonna be very good. Like you could activate an extra card in your turn. You, you could just replenish your whole hand and then hand dump and then repeat the process. As long as you have two extra cards in hand, you're good, right? And you're playing proactively. For Shanks, oh boy. I really want this leader to be good because I like Shanks. That being said, he is the only film leader besides, you know, Uda. He's the one for the film deck. He's he's pretty good. I mean, he he has this thing 
where he pumps the whole board for t by 2k. But you gotta imagine that, like, not an Animal Kingdom Pirates, right? Not very strong in a purple deck in and of itself. We'll see if this deck gets any support in the future. I would say no. Like, I, I don't think so. I think they've just pumped it out for the movie. But it is what it is. I mean, that's the way it goes in the, in the way of card games. These decks are all still very good. They all still have very powerful things about them. I don't think any of these decks are going to go anywhere for set two. I'm pretty sure. But, um, yeah. So, kind of pretty much it. I ain't mean, not much else to say. Uh, this is the awkward part of the video where I, I plug myself and I go say, go follow me on Twitter and Twitch at TempestFGC. Uh, I am a fighting game dude, uh, who just really just so happens to like card games. And, uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I don't got much of a pitch. If you, you don't feel like it, don't do it. All right. And, uh, other than that, uh, go check out the Discord link in the bio. If you disagree with any of my opinions, make sure to like dislike comment interact with us you know make sure to talk to us on the comments and yeah that's pretty much it